Hey everybody, Kronos here with some more War Thunder Historic Battle gameplay. So, this time I fly two more British Premium planes, the Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B I got in the Steam A spec, to compare it a bit with the Mark 1A I flew last week, and an old favorite of mine, the Mustang Mark 1A, to take a look at the difference between the two Premium planes that are pretty close together in the tech tree. So, let's take a look at the Mustang first, before we look at the Typhoon and compare the two a bit. Now, the Mustang Mark I is of course an early Mustang in British service and the predecessor to the plane that became famous escorting bombers over Europe. This early version does not have the Buckert Merlin engine though, but the Allison V1710 with a single stage supercharger. That means the high altitude performance of the plane is not very good. However, since the battles in War Thunder often end up on comparably low altitudes of 3000 meters and below, I don't consider that a massive problem right now. The Mustang is aerodynamically very clean and features a laminar flow wing, which reduces the plane's drag, but also increases its stall speed. The reduced drag is of course beneficial to the plane's speed and especially in a dive, the Mustang can reach impressive speeds and it has the structural strength to maneuver at high speeds, making the Mustang a great boom and zoom plane. This can also be beneficial when you can tempt an opponent with weaker structural strength to dive after you. Once he gets too fast, you can pull out of the dive and he has no choice but to either dive past you or risk losing his wings. On the flip side, the high star speed reduces the low speed maneuverability and means that the plane will stall sooner. It however does not stall as abruptly as the King Cobra I flew last week, which also has laminar flow wings. And even though the Mustang is not a great turner, I at least consider it easier and more comfortable to fly in a dogfight with direct control than the King Cobra because of that. Well then, let's take a look at the match in the Mustang. We are on Korea again and a 9T tried to get a shot on a Bearcat passing above. And he has apparently not noticed me approaching him. A good opportunity to take him out while he's slow from his steep climb. He was the only enemy plane really close to me at this point, so it's time to take a look around, judge the situation and decide where to go next. There is a LA-7 high above me, too high that I could catch up to him anytime soon and he does not appear to be interested in me either. Below me are several planes enemy and friendly but I don't want to give up all my altitude yet diving all the way down on them. In front of me, however, are a LA-7 and a IL-10 ground attack plane on somewhat similar altitude, apparently attacking a Lancaster bomber. At this point they seem to be the best target, so I move toward them. But I lose track on the IL-10 and the LA-7 is moving away towards his base. I could chase him, but again, I don't want to give up my altitude yet, or move that far away from the battle. Looking back, however, I can see that the LA-7 that was above me is now engaged with a mosquito. I assume the dogfight will slowly draw him down on my altitude, and the mosquito needs help against the fighter, so I head back towards them. I hope I can surprise the LA while he is busy with the Mosquito, which does a good job evading the LA-7's fire and staying alive. The LA-7 stays on his tail though, but as I had hoped, they lost quite a bit of altitude in the dogfight, giving me the advantage. The Mosquito moves toward me and then passes below me with the LA-7 in hot pursuit. As they pass below me, I go into a split S and roll after the LA. I don't get quite enough lead on him at the first, and he seems determined to stay on the Mosquito even though I get the hit on him on the second pass. He evades well and keeps attacking the Mossy. 
I have to get him off the mosquito before he can do serious damage. He proves a difficult target though, and he dodges left and right between his shots. But eventually a few more hits convince him to finally break off his attack on the mosquito and he starts to turn. Now with the mosquito out of danger, I have to turn after the LE7 to get him out of the fight. The Mustang doesn't quite turn well enough to get the necessary lead for the shot in a normal turn though, so I put the nose up and I go up in a high yo-yo, which gives me the lead I need, and I fire a volley pretty much at convergence range with devastating effect. Now the rest of the enemy team is closer to their base and me and the mosquito move towards them. There is a LA-7 on lower altitude and the IL-10 I saw earlier a bit higher. There is also an enemy bomber in the area, but he is currently no threat. The mossy bounces the LA-7 which turns back to base and I initially want to go after him, hoping to catch him but I notice that the IL-10 is moving towards me and even though it is just a ground attack plane, ignoring it and giving him an opportunity to get behind me while I chase the LA would be a fatal mistake. The IL-10 has two 23mm cannons after all. Now I could turn after the IL-2 right away but I decide against it because I am not sure if the LA-7 might come back. And also, I am not too familiar with the IL-10's capabilities at this point, but the plane is an improved IL-2, so I expect similar characteristics. And the IL-2, while slow and bad in vertical maneuvers, has a very large and thick wing, giving the plane a good low speed performance and makes it a pretty decent turner. So while an IL-2 is easy to beat by any fighter with simple vertical maneuvering, in a turn competition they might surprise you. So I prefer to engage the IL-10 with vertical maneuvering as well. Now looking at the data of the IL-10 afterwards, it appears it has a much smaller wing area than an IL-2, so it probably won't turn as well, but better safe than sorry. Now the LA-7 has moved back to base and I move away from the AA and above the TU-2 that is just leaving. I want to get above him to attack from above where the gunners can't hit me. But the mosquito sets him on fire and there is no need to attack anymore. So I just gain some altitude to have an energy advantage when the LA-7 comes back. Once he does come back from the base, we can intercept him, but after seeing us with an altitude advantage, he reverses course and moves straight back to base, so we have to fight him above the airfield AA. We better hurry up to limit our exposure to the triple A. I dive down after him and attack with a pretty decent speed, which he answers by turning into me. Now I maybe could have gotten enough lead to fire if I had pulled harder, but even the Mustang's structural strength has its limits and I don't want to needlessly risk losing wings. So I loop around to come around for a second attack from above. It looks like he turns to face me in a head on and I am not a fan of that, so I break off and loop around a second time but he turns away as well, apparently also not keen on a head-on. After looping around again, the next attack does the trick. Now there is only one enemy plane left, another TO2 bomber. We have my Mustang, two Mosquitos and the Lancaster still up. So victory is certain, or so it seems. Unfortunately for us though, I run out of ammo and apparently so do the mosquitoes. So we have to hurry back to base to get more ammo before we can destroy the last bomber. But by the time I am finally in position again to attack the bomber, the enemy ground troops have conquered the airfield. This is the first time I see that on this map, and the match is lost. 
this is another example that shows it is not over till it's over and there is no reason to give up just because the odds are against you. Well, that was a match with the Mustang Mark 1A. Let's take a look at the Harker Typhoon Mark 1B and compare the two a bit. The Typhoon 1B is similar in flight performance to the 1A I flew last week. A great boom in zoom plane, very fast and decent in a dive. Its thick wing profile keeps it from reaching very high speeds in a dive though, but at the same time give the plane a very low stall speed and make it an ok turner. The biggest difference to the Mark 1A is of course its armament. The four 20mm cannons do magnitudes more damage than the 12 rifle caliber machine guns of the 1A. As a trade-off, the 1B is 3 levels higher and will of course face higher level opponents than the 1A. Compared to the Mustang, the Typhoon climbs a bit better and has the better turn radius. But the Mustang rolls better and is much better in a dive and can reach speeds in a dive that are far beyond what the Typhoon can do. So the Typhoon can hold its own better in a turn fight but the Mustang is the better boom in zoom plane. Well, let's take a look at a few quick engagements in the Harker Typhoon Mark 1B. This is a match on Berlin and we have a BF109 on our right and a 190D in front of us, both on lower altitude. The 109 is already under attack by a Spitfire and a Bearcat, while the 190 is going after a damaged Tempest. With the 109 already under attack, the 190 is the obvious target, so I move towards him to attack. Meanwhile, the Spitfire has lost its wing to overspeed, so there is only the Bearcat on the 109 at this moment. But since there is nobody attacking the 190 but me, he has still priority to me and I start to dive down on him. The 190 reacts by pulling up into me to meet me in a head-on attack, which I want to avoid, so I loop around to reset and attack when he has lost the necessary speed to keep his nose pointed up. The idea is to finish off the 190 fast and then help the Bearcat out with the 109, but just when I am about to take my shot, the Bearcat swoops in and also attacks the 190 and the 109 is coming straight at me. Now I am not a big fan of head-ons in general, but especially not against a plane with possibly lots of extra cannons in gun pots, so I barrel roll around his fire and then come around to give chase. The Bearcat takes the head-on and does not survive it. Now at this point I notice a lot of extra red dots showing up on the minimap and I am not sure what all of those are, or if the 190 I attacked earlier is still around. So I move away a bit to take a look around and check the situation. It turns out all the extra dots are AI planes and the damaged 190 is moving away. I still want to gain just a little bit more separation from the AI biplanes. They do have weapons and when they catch up to you while you fight a real player they can do damage, so I prefer not having them too close when I engage in a dogfight. Now when I turn around I go into an offset head-on, which means my nose is pointing to the side of the enemy, not at him, and once he's close enough I go up and come around in a barrel roll. Evading a head-on like this has the additional advantage that you start your turn earlier so you are turned around and on your opponent's tail faster. After getting on the tail of the 109, the Typhoon turns well enough and is fast enough to let me stay there. You have to be careful about the roll rate though. With its bad roll rate, the Typhoon is not very good at scissors. Well, let's take a look at another quick Typhoon engagement, on Korea again. Most of the enemy planes are far below me, but one Yak-3 is passing above me. I go after him and I hope I can tempt him to come down and engage me in a dogfight rather than doing boom and zoom. 
he indeed comes down after me. But here I make a mistake. My plan is to put the nose down and turn in a low yo-yo while at the same time building up speed which I then want to use to come around in a high yo-yo or barrel roll. But I mess up and my nose is not pointing down as planned. I correct the mistake a bit too late and that gives him the opportunity to get a few hits in that damage my wing. Now after I do the barrel roll, when he's coming down for the next attack, I pull up into him in a scissor movement and then roll opposite to go after him. He does not roll opposite when he passes me, giving me the opportunity to get behind him. Now the damaged wing makes maneuvering a bit difficult and I have to fight the plane's tendency to roll all the time. But by the time he comes back, I have it stabilized enough to get a good burst on him. Now there's another Yak-3 right in front of me at lower altitude and I go down for a dive attack on him. But I don't get hits on him. And since I built up a decent speed in the dive, I now pull up somewhat carefully. I don't want to put too much stress on the damaged wing. Now looking around I can see a King Cobra coming into the fight and I turn his way to attack him. The Cobra saw me and he is putting the nose up to face me in a head on. I dive towards him and roll around his line of fire. Since he climbed up while I dove down, I am faster when we pass each other, so it is pretty easy to come around and get in fire position. The damaged wing still gives me a bit of trouble, but the Cobra is pretty slow at this point and easy to hit. Now, as someone pointed out in the comments last time, if a damaged wing gives you trouble, it is often a good idea to use the aileron trim to compensate. But I often forget about that in the heat of the battle and the Typhoon does not have aileron trim anyway. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it was enjoyable, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.